Two guests, Miss. Uh, it's a cat sandwich here today. Yeah. <laughs> a cat and a cat and a Leah in the middle. We're like Oreos or something. I don't know. <laughs> that could be interpreted way too many ways. But welcome, Cat SD. How you doing? I'm good. Yourself? I'm very, very well. Catherine Ashley and yourself? Very good. You? All right. Cool. All right. Let's get into it right off the oh, bat. Oh, okay. Cool. You what? I got the chats working. No, anyways, complicated. Just I'm on chat now. I'm happy. She's running two computers at once because someone just updated to Windows 10 yeah. and doesn't know how to use it yet. <laughs> no, it's not fucking letting me sign into Twitch through Windows 10, so I fucking popped up my laptop in front of me instead and used it from there. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. All right. So, um, what are you la ladies playing right now? Get I'll let my first cat go. Cat senior go. <laughs> cat senior. Uh, I, I started playing Need for Speed Rivals. Oh, nice. Uh, I wanted to see how he compares with uh, Forza and whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, I'm playing on PS4, and I miss my Xbox controller, to be honest. <laughs> the triggers on the PS4 aren't as great, uh, aren't as sensitive as on the Xbox, but no, other than that... Huh? No haptics. Yeah, they're not as fine tuned. Like yeah. you can see that when they made the Xbox, they were like, people are gonna play two things: Forza and Halo. Um, Aw yeah. <laughs> so, but other than that, I'm enjoying the game. It's a different dynamic. I just like I went through the tutorial, and I'm still debating if I want to be a cop or a racer. Oh. But it's yeah, you have objectives, and it's it's almost yeah. It's not just a driving game, you know, Forza Horizon, I can just dick around and not in this game because you're constantly online and you're constantly being chased by the other faction. So okay. it's a different dynamic. Okay. Um, I'm going to enjoy learning that game. Oh, sweet. So do you have a like story scenario that you have to complete? I mean, Forza Horizons was totally like loosey goosey, like you're in a festival, complete things, blah, 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 blah. But is there, like, a person, like, the crew, where you actually have, like, a story you're following? No, it's just, um, it's just, are you a cop? Or are you a racer? Here are your objectives. Here's what you have to do to earn money and earn more cars and earn more, uh, you know, ways to update your car and whatever. And it's just, like, if you're a cop, you chase after racers. If you're a racer, you, you know, you win races and run out of, run away from the cops. That's okay. basically it. The premise is very simple, but they put more effort into the objectives and what you can do in the game. You know, like Forza, once you've cleared the festival, it's like, okay, I'll go and I'll get um, more of the bucket list items. I'll complete the festival again and things like that, or I'll play online with other people. That one is just like, there's no story, but it's like the list of shit to do. It's pretty extensive. Okay, cool. So do you think it's gonna be bigger than Forza or the crew? Or are you kind of like on par? Well, it's not a dud. Uh, it's okay. not like Drive Club or the crew. Like people are still playing it and people are playing it a lot. It's been out for a while. Yeah. The edition I got is the complete edition that came with the six DLCs. Yeah. So it's, no, I think like if you're gonna play, if you're not enjoying Forza because it's too like, simulation related and you know you get tired of Forza driving around the racetrack or you know in Horizon you don't want to do the festival again or you don't want to get the X pack and do the same thing mm. in a different spot then um, Need for Speed will you know will give you that challenge that constant challenge and it's like an MMO almost and it's you know you'll never run out of things to do if you're goal oriented if you just want to like cruise um, that's where Forza Horizon wins, in my opinion. I'm okay. more of the cruising person. Like, I really, like, once in a while, I just go back to Forza and I just kind of, like, chill and drive around. I race around fast and I whip around fast, but, you know, it's, it's, I'm never looking behind my back to see, like, if my rival is 
trying to get to me. So okay. yeah, Need for Speed is really adrenaline based, like really like high performance, get your shit done. It's like you're playing GTA and you always have five stars. <laughs> Do you find the driving better? Or eh. worse? Or on par? Or just different? Or I'm pretty sure it's on par. Okay. It's just I feel that the dual shock doesn't do it justice maybe. Okay. And maybe it's the controller I was playing with like one of the tr the the trigger I used for the gas was actually squeaking and I was like, "Oh, this is not good." <laughs> um I f I'm sorry, but the new dual shock feels better, but I think it's a bit more cheaply made. Really? It's not it's not resisting well to to wear and tear like this guy here my day one that, you know, Pascal used this to play hockey for a year, and he usually destroys a dual shock for the PS3. Mm -hmm. He went through mm -hmm. two of them Whoa. in two years of playing hockey. This guy is still perfect. Like, the joysticks are still perfect. Like, these things are, are built to last. I'm a bit disappointed with the performance of the dual shock. I already have one that the um, audio jack doesn't work anymore. Okay. Um, I think my Shom one has a busted trigger. Really? Uh, yeah, and then the third one that does have the audio geo jack that kind of works that I managed to get it to work for my journey stream, that one has the trigger that squeaks. So I'm just like, these are all no luck. These are all duds. I've never had a dud Xbox controller, but I've had PlayStation duds. Oh, wow. That's my gripe. That's why I say, but playing with the PlayStation again, I'm like, wow, this thing boots fast, and the console is faster, and the UI is slicker, and you know, I don't. When I boot my Xbox, I boot it, I go to the bathroom, I go get a drink, you know, I have two minutes to waste. Like, the PS4 is like, let's play! Mm. So, I really wish I could connect an Xbox controller to my PS4. Merge the two and make the hybrid monster console that wins all consoles. Make the console war winner. <laughs> Kat, Ashley, I know you've been on vacation for a little bit. Have you had any time oh, to uh, play some games? I have to remember to unmute myself. Um, yes, actually, I've been playing the same one. So Many Me and Outlast. Which... Ooh, So Many Me. I yeah. downloaded that the other day. Yeah, it's fucking fun. And it's hard. It's hard for a little cutesy fat puzzler. But, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's more of my in-between um, game. I'll put it on when I have nothing else to do. I'll just put it on and play it for like an hour or so. Okay. Or I'll Google how to fucking play a level because I'm obsessive. I have OCD and I have to complete it 100%. And if I don't, uh. I go on Google. And Outlast just fucking scares the shit out of me, so I've been jumping a lot. But other than that, I've been kind of on a gaming hiatus because I've been in Quebec City, I went to Burlington, so I've been on vacation a lot. And I have a bunch of games that I have to actually start playing, and I have a new mouse to play uh, Counter-Strike, and I haven't started playing that again yet, so... Yeah, it's, you definitely need that break over the summertime, time to get away, and uh, don't worry, because we'll be putting you to work in fall. <laughs> well, it's not like that. I mean, I had Devin to amuse for his two weeks off, so, like, I felt guilty playing video games while he was home, like, watching me play video games. <laughs> so, like, we did stuff together and walked around and shit, so it was fun, though. It was nice, but, but yeah, next game I'll be playing, which I'm probably going to stream, everybody, mm -hmm. is Counter-Strike. Mm -hmm. I want to show people my transition from being horrendously terrible to being hopefully decent eventually with the with the guidance of Simo, our uh, CSGO uh, guru. So, awesome. Yeah. Looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to it too. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Me, I'm uh, in the middle of Rare Replay, because we got a review copy, and I'll be streaming that after the podcast tonight. I think I'm going to stream uh, Viva Pinata, because I've never played that before, and I think it'll be interesting and a good, like, get into it. And when I booted up the game, it looks so damn pretty. That I can't wait to try it now. But I set up like everything on my Xbox already in advance so that I can just like jump from the computer, run to the to the living room and turn it on. Uh, but the game I have been playing was Banjo Kazooie. I love that game. Like everything about it. I really wish they did an HD remaster, but you know. <laughs> it's time for them to move on to do that ukulele game, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so far so good on the uh, rare replay. The only complaint I have so far, everything runs really well, um, and of course you're getting used to, like, it's, the controls are the same as they used to be, that kind of stuff. Um, the only thing is, is like, it's 50 gigs to download, so um, it downloads in groups of games, and you have like one game at a time that'll install. So yeah, my library right now is more 360 games than Xbox One games, because I always run out of memory on my Xbox and have to uninstall stuff. But I didn't own a 360. So this is my chance to, like, oh, go back true. and play all those games. Yeah, I did not. 
So this is my first experience with Xbox is playing with an Xbox One. Okay. So that's so a lot of fun for me as a noob. So you're probably really excited for the, um, the backwards compatibility when it uh, pops up for us. Uh, yeah, like the non-chosen stuff, ones. Like, like gears and stuff. Like I never got a chance to play that, so I'm really stoked. Mass Effect. Would be, if I were you, I would first Mass jump Effect. Mass Effect before Gears. Yeah. That's just my humble opinion. Yeah. But uh, I'm just looking for some Halo Reach for it to come back. Halo I'm gonna Reach. play the shit out of that when it fucking jumps on the uh, uh the when it becomes uh, available for backwards Do compatibility. Do you think that's gonna come prior to Halo Five? I think it will. I sure as fucking hope so. That's what I I'm think banking it will. on. Halo Five's coming out in what? November. It's end. Eleven. Oh, yeah, shoot. November eleventh. Fall Four is end of October. And Halo, because it comes out in 10 days apart, right, I think? Something like, or something that. like that. Yeah, because I have, I have a good oh, yeah, space you're... to play a bit of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm hoping it's going to come out before, because like, I need my Halo fix, and I, and I can't do MCC anymore. Okay. Even though it's been fixed, but I just, I can't. Just yeah. not, uh, no. Just play some Counter-Strike until the time comes. Yeah, suck at it, which I am very competitive, so I don't like sucking at stuff. Anyways, carry <laughs> on. <laughs> to you. Before we move into hot topics, um, or hot news... We've got a little bit of, like, you know, house cleaning stuff. Just want to let you know that Indie Spotlight is back this week, but a little different because Cat Ashley is going to be streaming potentially on Friday. Potentially, because I'm just waiting on, because I really want the devs to join us in the chat. Yeah, and I did. forgot that they're at Gamescom in fucking Germany this weekend. So uh, one of them, I he mentioned it to me, so I emailed him back saying, like, do you want us to postpone it? So I'll know more by tomorrow. Uh, if not... He's okay with me streaming and he doesn't care to join or not, but we'll be streaming on Friday night. Sounds good. If not, that'll be yeah. next week, but we're trying to get back on track again now that people are yeah. kind of out of vacation. We're slowly getting out of vacation mode because stuff here in Quebec kind of swings into gear mid-August, like kids go back to school and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. So a little different around here than other places. Um, when it comes to Fan Expo, we're still working on that jazz. We'll let you know when we have some news. Uh, but with that being said, we got a wonderful little donate button down in the bottom of this screen. And we love you all forever. But yeah, if any little dollar bit counts, and we will love you infinitely. Not that we don't already, but yes, you know how it is. We also sell t-shirts. Um, Girls on Games ones. Not exactly this one. It's actually a silver one. This is one of my older ones. Um, but yeah, that, you can track it all down through our website. Uh, wonderful Amanda at Electric printed them all. They're all hand-printed, you know, Montreal-based. It's really super cool. So you can go check that out. Guys and girls cuts, because, you know, we're girls, right? Uh, so, let's jump into some news. Um, first off the bat, get Halo out of the way, because it's back in the news again, because people are ranting and raving. The lack of split screen in Halo 5 is uh, a hot topic. Cat Ashley wasn't on the podcast when we spoke about it, when nope. it really hit the news, but it just keeps spiraling, because uh, controversy is controversy, and Halo everybody loves. Um, so, Cat, I kind of want to get your two cents two cents on the whole situation like are you do you care are you are you sad okay well um first off i don't even know why it's it's news again and me and and uh, graf who's in the chat right now we we're talking about this because it was news like what two three months ago that they announced yeah. there was not be any fucking split screen I, and at the time when it was initially announced i was really upset because i mean that's a huge part of halo right couch co-op right chilling out with friends when it's like three in the morning you come back from a bar and no one's tired, so we play some Halo, right? That's, well, that's what I used to do. But um, right now, for Halo 5, I don't give a shit. Halo 4 split screen was such a shit experience. Like, honestly, I would try and play it with other people, and it would freeze, it would lag, it was a pain in the ass, I wouldn't win, I wasn't happy, so I eventually started to just play on my own. Same thing with MCC, I don't find it, maybe it's me, but I don't find it good. Um, if you want to keep the frame rate up, good graphics and all that, we're going to have to remove the split screen. I mean, that's just what it is. Uh, the Xbox One can't handle that. And, and as we saw, like, Destiny, same thing. Bungie, I mean, Bungie was the birther of Halo, who was who created the whole, like, split screen uh, hoopla. So, I mean, they removed it from their formula. So, I mean, Titanfall can't play split screen either. So, for me, it's normal. I really don't see the big deal of it. I play online more than anything else, and it, we're just going to have to accept until, I guess were able to implement it. And you never know, they can do it as a patch later on. Maybe they'll add split screen as an extra patch, but for launch, I don't find it a big deal. I think they're going to really ha run into issues with frame rate, with graphic of course they are. That thing, when we saw that at E3 in the, the press conference, scary, it, looked, so. it looked gorgeous. Yeah. Like that game. Like, exactly. looked beautiful. So I can't imagine how they're going to do that 
twofold because that's essentially what you're doing. You're rendering two things at once. So. It's so it's so hard to do split screen. It's so demanding on on the on your product. So, I mean, at launch, like look, the internet is like I said, the internet's a very scary place. I mean, especially with MCC's disaster, like they're going to be expecting a lot from three four three. Basically, Halo Five is going to be the make it or break it for three four three, and whether Halo is going to continue on as a as a series that people are going to play. And if they fuck that shit up. Mm. They're gonna fuck it up royally to the point where three four three is gonna get booted from Microsoft and Halo's gonna be donezo. So no, I don't think Halo will ever be donezo. Mm, I don't know, man. It's the 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 amount of people playing ever since Halo three has been continuously dropping off like pretty bad. And but, I mean, hey, those are big games. Those are not they're, they're demanding games. There's a lot put into it. I don't if Halo five doesn't make it. I don't think Halo's gonna. But be the thing is, is Halo is a a, a, a banner. Like oh, IP for them. Like if they they won't just cut it, they'll just end up doing little like side projects and things like that. Yeah, they won't ever kill it which because is not like the essence of Halo. Though. Everybody, like, yeah. Like if you go and talk to a non gamer, what do they know? Oh, you're playing the Halos. You're playing the Call of Duties. Like that's all they know. Next yeah, to like Mary. And I totally so. agree with that, but like I, I honestly believe that if Halo Five doesn't make it, Halo is not going to be the center for Xbox. They're going to find something else. It's going to be uh, Gears. a backwards thought or Gears maybe depending on how the new Gears comes out. Because again, judgment was pretty god awful. But um, but yeah, no. Um, I, I have faith in three four three, and I think they're doing the right thing by putting priority on what people want. Good multiplayer, bring it back to the arena shooter. I think it's going to be a good thing. But and I really think that split screen right now, as of launch, is a non-issue, and people should just stop it. And I really don't know why Polygon came out with that fucking clickbait article out of the blue. Like we already knew this. this is, we knew it. It's this. Is, the truth of it. I think it's just because it went down and then all of a sudden it's like another sector of the internet didn't hear. Right. Like, we're part of the like grapevine or something, yeah. and it's like shot back up again. I, I mean, I they'll know. do it. Like, they'll write something about it if people are talking about it, and people were obviously talking about it because someone was in a box that didn't hear what was going on. I'm assuming it's because of E3, and then they probably reiterated the fact that there was no split screen, and now, like, oh my yeah. god, it's true, there's no split screen, but no, it's not a big deal. For now, it's fine. We'll play online together. We'll be friends. We'll play online. I'll play yeah. with everyone else. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's just my opinion. Keeping on the Xbox track, Windows 10 is out. Now, I have a Mac, so I didn't install it yet, obviously. Flap, um, flap. Wah, wah. <laughs> I'm using my Mac right now. <laughs> Cat uh, SD, do you, have you installed it yet? Or are you waiting? I'm still waiting. waiting. I uh, asked for, for download. Yeah, pff, yeah, it's not available. Okay. All right. It's like not even at home, not even at work, mind you. I don't know how I would download it at work because we have the crappiest internet con connection available in all of the island of Montreal. <laughs> how about you, Cat Ashley? Oh, I just booted it up. Like I said, like. Uh... Just installed it. I, I just installed. Well, no, it was it was installed, and then my computer then closed, and I just booted up for for the podcast, and I was like, "Ooh, this is really pretty," and then that's it. Then I couldn't I couldn't log on to Twitch, so then I had to bust out my laptop. Okay. This said, so I'm actually using my laptop for like Twitch, Twitch chat. chat. Yeah. So. You probably well, Skype works. You probably no. just need to download some plugins. Yeah, yeah, that's it. All. I'm gonna thing fangle with it afterwards. Sir. Yeah, I have a stuffer. So far, it looks nice. I enjoy it. It's running smoothly. Yeah, it's running. My mic uh, works. <laughs> but besides your issue with Twitch, there has been some pretty funky uh, uh, issues. Simo had sent us a link to a Reddit post of some dude who installed it, and then all his porn ended up on his desktop. I don't know how true that is, like really, but it's kind of funny. Kind of funny. Um, there's been some email scams also going around, so be careful of that. IGN uh, posted an article about it if you want warning uh, to make sure you're not installing malware on your computer and how to find out whether or not it is a scam or not, like looking out for special characters in the email and that kind of stuff that looks whack. Um, always, of course, Microsoft, when they send you stuff, it's going to be like super clean and super nice. They're not going to do like weird English and have weird ca characters in there, so... Be careful, folks. We don't want you to get viruses, because that sucks. Mm. That does suck. Um, I haven't seen too much. Everything I've seen actually has been pretty good, like people running into minor issues, but for the most part, it's been smooth sailing. Um, I haven't seen many people stream yet using it. I don't know if you guys have seen anything online. Have you? No? Me neither. But then again, vacation, right? And yeah, I spent the whole weekend at Parc Jean Drapeau for Oceaga, so... Yeah! <laughs> Non-video game time! Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for it. Uh, I'm sure when, 
once Kat SD uh, has it on her computer, she'll test out streaming with it and, you know, talking Xbox One to PlayStation, uh, to, to PlayStation, to PC, and I'm sure Kat Ashley's going to spin it too and see what happens. Mm, well, Friday. You know? I mean, if I stream Jotun on Friday, if it actually works out, I'll be using my... You're uh... going to try and use it? Yeah. Okay, cool. That's another thing too. I'm wondering, like, like, of course, I have Photoshop and all that kind of stuff. Will that work when I install it? Mm. Like, will OBS work? Will all these kind of things? Like, there's <laughs> all these questions that you run into. Too many questions. I didn't even think of yeah. any of that. I just fucking... You just went install. On. Yeah. I, think I, had a, I had a hard time installing it because it was installing in the background. Kind of the same problem as Grab have. It only did it once, and yeah. it tried to install, and it failed. Oh. I'd do, like, a bunch of other installs and restart my computer, reprompt to find it, and then okay. reinstall it. Alrighty then. We're kind of going to stick on the PC front, but it's a little different. Um, Hori, who makes some like uh, uh, peripherals, is actually created a mouse and keyboard, I want to call it, but it's not really. It's like an aero directional pad for playing shooters on PS4. Is this seriously something you guys would use to play a shooter? Or are you much more like just giving my damn controller? Um... I'm terrible at shooters either way. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Would you okay. spend good money on something when you have a gaming PC? No. Uh, okay. Well, the, honestly, for shooters, the only thing I would recommend is this thing. The, I can't see that. The stinky oh, game. The stinky board. The foot oh, controller. Oh, stinky board. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, the when you're gaming on PC, it's the only thing I, I say would give you an edge or a difference. Okay, cool. Uh, especially with people that have limited mobility in the hands. But like, uh, you know, if you're playing on a console, why the fuck would you need a keyboard? Yeah, that's true. And now the, uh, the other question that comes up with this is like, do you think this is going to bring parity between console versus PC gamers? Because that's always a thing, right? They okay. say that like, obviously console gaming with a controller is a lot less precise than with a with a mouse mm -hmm. and keyboard. So would this bring parity? Would we start seeing like cross platform PC Precision PS4? wise, I'm assuming yes. But then I mean uh, computers will have better graphics and consoles right. so you could basically DIY it. But um, I don't I because I was even talking, well, once again, I was discussing these issues before, but uh, I never played the PS3 one, because apparently there was a PS3 version of it, mm -hmm. and was crappy, but I did play the one on the Dreamcast for Quake, which I thought was Quake 2, but it was Quake 3, and I enjoyed it. Okay. So I think on the PS4, it would, be, it would I, I don't see why it wouldn't, I mean, I don't see the, really the point of it. It could be cool, it could be cool for, like, bridging gaps, like you were saying and shit, but uh, parody-wise, yeah, I'm, I mean, if you can if you can shoot with a mouse, I mean, that's reason why there's no more cross there's not any cross uh, platform gaming between PC and consoles because of that it's more precise you don't have aim assist with yeah. uh, mouse and keyboard yeah so. I think and kind of where Catherine was talking with the, the, the stinky footboard it's cool for those that have disabilities who can't hold on to the controller the same way so that kind of like bridges that gap but whether or not it's actually necessary and it's going to bridge any gap between like the the abilities of a PC gamer versus a console gamer for shooters I don't think we're ever going to run into that problem. <laughs> it's funny. Alicia was actually supposed to be on podcast with us, wonderful 8 bit, bit blonde, but she uh, ran into some family stuff she had to do today and the thing she wrote in our Google Doc was nope, no thanks. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I wrote that too. In all caps. All caps. Yeah. All caps of rage. But see, I, I, as, a, as a first person shooter, I, I don't mind it as much. I don't know. I don't see the, the big deal of it. Like, it could potentially work. I mean, it's whatever you're comfortable with. I mean, there, there's, there's good parts about playing on console. And if you're more comfortable with a mouse and keyboard, and that's what stops you from playing on console because you don't like a manette, or what is it called in English? A controller. controller. <laughs> a controller. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. If it's gonna be, if it's gonna work well, I don't see why not. I don't see the problem. And it would be cool if they had something like that for the for the Xbox, unless there's already one and I don't know about it. All but right, I don't well, think so. we'll try to get our hands on one and give you our yeah. impressions. Say if it's worth your money or not. Yeah. Exactly. Still on hardware front, Ouya was bought by Razer last week, and in the hoopla about all the news, we found out that a fair number of devs who had agreed to work on Ouya stuff with a special promises of money guarantees for their games on Ouya were never paid back. Wah, wah. Probably because Ouya didn't sell enough. <laughs> um, this has since been resolved, and thank God for Razer uh, being so forthcoming in returning the owed money to the devs and like, like 
to them because you know they could have been like f you guys but obviously you know they want to hold on to the devs the whole purpose of that is because they want the idea factory and the devs and perhaps the controller of the Ouya, but they want nothing to do with the box itself. They are trying to build their own uh, Android console, I guess you could call it, um, and they would rather you buy that than the Ouya. They're just going to take everything the Ouya learned and throw it into their stuff. Thoughts, guys? I muted myself. Uh, <laughs> I haven't. I honestly have not read enough and could have much of an opinion, so I'll leave the floor to Cat on this one. Well, we cat. we touched based on it last week during the podcast, and uh, or is it two weeks ago? I forget. Um, but it was basically that I think the steam machines will do what the Ouya was not able to do, and that's what Razer is building steam machines. So I'm pretty sure they can work with a lot of the minds behind because they they said it they're flushing the hardware they're they just want the software the idea machines they want the people the pro programmers they want the talent um they want the people that had the drive to create something like ouya to make sure that their steam machine is a success and honestly i think steam machines have a better chance of surviving than ouya because there's already a platform you know ouya tried to bring like android mobile games to console as in, you know, Steam is already a well <clears throat> ingrained platform with a very rich library and it's going to give people the chance to play either on their it's going to bridge that gap between console and PC, like whether you want to play and it's going to be an open concept and um, I think it's going to be a, a bigger success than Ouya. It's not going to be like oh my god, Xbox, Playstation but, you know Pretty sure it's going to sell more than Wii U. Oops, I said it. Huh. All right. So, moving on. The genius at Game Theory broke down esports to prove that they are actual sports, contrary to what the folks at ESPN commentators have to say. How do you guys feel about esports being considered sport in the eyes of ESPN? Due to the popularity of Twitch, does it even matter? Hmm. I didn't watch the video, just as a heads up, so okay. I'm purely on my own opinion on this one. All right, well, I can break it down on what they said. Yeah, what's their major point? Okay. I'm also not a complete so, idiot. A whole bunch of things that they mentioned. So they took down, you know, like, you need a team. Mm -hmm. In basketball, you have a team, and in, mm -hmm. in esports, you have a team, you know, like Counter Strike Team, Call of Duty, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. um, you need to have, like, precision, you know, like, training. And these, you know, like, NBA players, you know, like, they have training. They actually use NBA as a really good example of, of, of the comparison between the two. And, of course, you, they talked about, like, esports guys and how they live together and they train, like, 12 to 14 hours a day. Then they talk about sponsorships and they have that. They talk about viewership. It has that. And then they say, why are they complaining when they show stuff like the poker championships? Mm -hmm. And they started comparing, like, the dudes and their, like, ridiculous get-ups to to esports and then they talk about the followings and all that kind of stuff and yeah mm -hmm. it's like legitimate <laughs> mm -hmm. and they did it's just so well done you can like hear the sarcasm in his voice as he's talking and like shitting on the espn uh -huh. commentators um but yeah that's pretty much it and how it doesn't really matter um that yes what espn thinks because you know more people are watching twitch oh, you know, than yeah. any before and it's on its own and it is a sport i'm sorry uh what, like, okay, it's basically what he said. I mean, what's the criteria of a sport, right? Mm. I mean, it involves what? Okay, so you have to, some sort of physical activity, which someone, that, that is a physical activity. You're using your hand, you're using your keyboard, you're, you know, you're being precise, like he said, precision. Hand-eye coordination. Exactly. Uh, what else about sports? I don't know if I press off or, like, there's rules and regulations, which there's rules right. and regulations in, you know, we'll say, we'll use Counter-Strike as an example, and it's competitive. And the whole point of it is to win. I mean, that is the definition of a sport. What? Why? Because you're not running around sweating? Like, oh, no, they did sweat. I saw them sweat. They were sweating. The boys were sweating. <laughs> was that because though. of the okay. heat in the room, yeah. though? <laughs> but either way, I, I sweat when I play. I mean, right now I'm probably sweating because my air conditioning's off so people can hear me. But, like, when I fucking get angry and and play hard, <laughs> which sounds so stupid. But when I do that, like, I start sweating. I mean, I, to me, it's a sport, and, and I'm engaged in it. And it's, I don't know, for me, it's a sport. And I find it's really disrespectful. And, um... I don't know, small-minded when people are like, no, video games can't be a sport. Like, why not? Like you said, fucking poker. Why the hell is that considered a sport? Why is that broadcast the on ESPN? I watch that shit when I go to Scratch. Or, 
They do like oh, spelling wait. bees. Or what's the other one? The one the not The dog the shows. Guys. The dog shows. Oh, what's that one with the brush and the Olympic? Curling. No, curling. that that is freaking hard. Have you ever no. tried that? Still, it's it's boring. boring. And no, it's so awesome. I love boring. it. <laughs> Spoken like a true newfie. <laughs> Curling's <laughs> awesome, eh? Let's get a two four and do some curling. Yeah. <laughs> if that's considered a sport, video games can be considered a sport. It well, has all, meets all the criteria. Sorry that, you know, you know, Ryan Reynolds is short shorts jogging up a hill. That's what I mean. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, just, it's just leave it at that. And ESPN is good. And it's, it's breaking barriers by showing it on things that are, are being broadcasted to, like, many, it's breaking barriers by showing it on things that are, are being broadcasted to, like, many, many people. Different but, people that might have seen and be like, oh wow, this is really cool. People shooting each other is fun. No, well, let's I'm face it, is happen. that. <laughs> you know, you know why they said that, right? Because they realized that eSport does not need network broadcasting. It does not need ESPN, and like, they are just mad that they're. Because every TV channel, every. is bleeding advertisement money. Like. Uh, except for the Super Bowl, nobody wants to pay for advertisement in TV anymore because they want to advertise to the kids, and the kids don't watch broadcasted television. They watch Netflix, yes. downloaded shit, and Twitch, and YouTube. So they're just... They made that comment, but you know what? ESPN needs eSport more than eSport needs ESPN. And you know what? If ESPN stays in that old-school mentality, they're going to get shut down. For, from lack of people watching, or they're gonna have to hold on to those like uh, broadcast rights for like football and hockey, and it's gonna na take them like you know four major sports to get the ratings mm -hmm. that esports get. I'm pretty sure like you know Super Bowl is like gets millions and millions and millions, and they're like biggest broadcasted event. I'm pretty sure like some of those League of Legends events no. are pushing. I Maybe pushing it, but I don't think you're gonna ever reach those. Because the thing is, those big, massive, fucking sporting events is that you have to watch it on television. It's not broadcast broadcast online. So all the revenue coming in from those commercials, those fucking Super Bowl commercials. I'm sure it's the same thing with NBA and all that. Like that still makes a lot of money. But eventually, I could see it becoming to that. Like I could see it going to that level if it's it's if it's localized on one area. But like you said, it's not. They don't need broadcast media. They just it's on Twitch. It's on online everywhere. So exactly. And I have basic cable. Basic cable. I basic analog cable, and the only reason I still have it is every time I try, I call to cancel it. They gave me a rebate. They're like, it's oh, actually, <laughs> it, it's actually more expensive to Get keep, you. to keep. It's actually more expensive to cancel my cable than to keep it because they're like scrunching for numbers to prove that people are still subscribed to cable. The only reason I I keep it, they're like, if I take it off, my weekly internet bill is going to be twenty dollars more expensive in the end than if I take off, than if I keep the cable. So I keep it and you know it doesn't get turned on ever. I think I turned it off to the news one day because there was a cataclysm and I didn't feel like booting my computer. Mm. I just read it on your phone. Yeah, oh. I didn't have my phone by me. Okay. <laughs> oh well it's the way of the future. They'll figure it out eventually. But um Canadian, I think I think they're a Canadian company. The Score, they're making an app for esports or integrating esports into their current app, which which, uh, which is a traditional sports app. Exactly. So that'll be interesting to see. I remember reading that maybe three, four months back. Let's see if they actually do it. Fingers crossed. All right, we're gonna jump into topics. Um, just to let you guys know, if you want to chime in on the topics post your comments into the Twitch chat. I'm going to try and read them at the same time. Obviously, it's a little delayed, so sometimes it's a little difficult. Also, if you got any questions for us, throw them in the Twitch chat. I'll keep track of those as well, and we'll answer them at the end of the show. So, first, let's go. Ladies, we're seeing a lot of games that are recently released or soon to be released that could easily become esports. Simo wrote an awesome article about the potential of Rainbow Six Siege, and I really see that Splatoon could also join that rank and become an esport. What games have you seen come out in the, you know, not too long ago past, or coming up, that could turn into esports? Let's start with Cat Ashley. <laughs> oh, you wrote something I wonder what it's gonna be! Uh, Halo 5. Why? <laughs> I mean, why? Because, uh, um... Because she Back wants a reason to play for 250 hours. She doesn't need a reason. She does it anyway. When I was 
No, when I when I was my peak Haloing, I put all those hours in for absolutely no reason. But um, back in the day, I mean, Halo was an esport. I mean, I think it can, it has a lot of potential to to be back in that again, especially if we. But the thing is, is that Halo is an arena shooter, which now it's not really. It has to go back more to that and make that popular again, and I think it would. And I think it'll be a lot of fun because there's a lot of skill and a lot of. Um, it's very fun to watch Halo, and Halo does take a lot of skill, contrary to what a lot believe. Um, I mean, it takes different skill than what's popular right now in, in, uh, in esports shooters like uh, CSGO, such as when you're playing CSGO, you have to stand and shoot, whereas Halo, you have to jump around like a maniac to not get shot. But I think, honestly, um, for me, it would be Halo 5. I think it would be very good if it could go back to the basics, go back to what it, the essence, like Halo 2 era. I think it would make a fantastic esport and um, dollar dollar bills, y'all. Like I would fucking super play the shit out of it. If, oh, I'll play it anyways, but still, I think it would make great. Cat, uh, SD. It's hard. I can't just say cat. Yeah. Cat one, cat two, cat even your cat junior. I don't know. Cat um, I could see like some of the Nintendo titles. I feel should become a um, a serious esports, even if. Because of the nature of Nintendo, people might bring it down, but like Super Smash, holy shit! Like if that you is the number one esport though. That's already an esport. Yeah, but does it? Why aren't we seeing events like you know, like Call of Duty? And I mean, um, uh, Counter Strike is getting more and more events. As in, I'm, I haven't seen like official organized SSB events other than community events. You know, wasn't it part of Evo? I'm pretty sure it was part of Evo. Was that part which of it? Yeah, which is like a fighting thing, and that's a fighting game, therefore it was part of it. It's not, no, it's not on the same level as Counter-Strike and the shooter games and all that kind of stuff. Or League, or anything like that. But, it is there. It's there, but it needs to be more. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to be in the top, because so many people play it. Uh, I've played against people that, you know, live and breathe Super Smash, and like, my character never fucking touched the ground. <laughs> and I was just like, what? And, you know, and it's... I think so. And I think Splatoon has a good... A good, um... A good base for that as well. And, you know, don't get me because they're cartoonies and shit. Like, I've played WoW a lot. I saw what League of Legends looks like. What Heroes of the Storm look like. It's all a bunch of plasticky looking dudes. Cartoony dudes. Mm -hmm. It's the same. And it's still played by 15-year-old boys and 15-year-old girls that aspire to have gaming as a career. So what's the difference? Man, if that was available when I was younger, I was so taken out as a fucking career path. I know. <laughs> it's like yeah. game development. If I had known. If I had known. I was oh my. Or someone told me, like, you can actually do this for a living. Like, you're playing Crazy Taxi for this many hours, but Catherine, you can do this for a living. <laughs> no. Instead, I'm going the fucking regular route anyways <laughs> hey you're doing well with it you're doing well with it yeah. we've got some folks in the chat who have said a few games rocket league by uh the beast 52 which i can see rocket league is super popular right now and it could totally be i tried that the other day for a quick minute that's fun that game is really fun <laughs> i can see that and each 15 i yeah a lot of sports games could do it um but i guess because the competition with real sports games they don't or real sports they don't do it Street Fighter, I'm pretty sure, is part of Evo as well, so technically it is a, uh, a eSport. How about Mario Kart? You don't uh, see that. I would have a career in Mario Kart. Fuck that shit. Blue shell your face. <laughs> Win a couple of thousand dollars, quit my shitty J job. That would be fun. How about Mario Maker? Like, we, they, the whole tournament could be, like, these, like, specialty level designers create these levels. And, like, you have, like, the specialists in that. And then you have the specialists in players. Like, the best Mario players in the world. And the whole scenario is that, like, the level creators have to make these things. And the level designers have to, or the level uh, players have to get through them. And that's the eSport. That could be done. That'd be fun. Awesome to watch. I mean... You watch the, uh, the the world uh, what was it called world tournament or whatever during uh, just before E3. That was a lot of fun to watch. I would enjoy that. I would totally be one of the level players, not the designers, because I'm creative in a normal life and I just want to play games so people can serve me stuff. But yeah, that would be tons of fun. 
I love that. What I want to see is a esports style, like, you know, triathlon or whatever was that thing that Bruce Jenner won in the Olympics in the 70s? You have to play everything? You just move from station to station to station, you know, like you do the pole vaulting, you do the race, the, the running, and then you do the, the... So you have, like, station and you have a shooter, a racer, and, like, you know, uh, you just have, like, you have to go through ten events. And that's how you win. And if you win all of them, like Bruce Jenner did, you're like the peak of athletic, esport athleticism. That would be cool. I want to see that shit. Or, you know, triathlons, decathlons, whatever. Just that like, cool. you know, run, swim, bike. Okay. Shoot, race, and fight. Yeah. Do one of like every, like you have to do a platformer. You have to do a, do a racer. You have to do a shooter. You have to do a puzzle game. You have to do, what else could you have to do? I don't know. But that would be fun. A lot of fun. And you could do it like different generations too. You could be like retro gaming esports. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That just like fun. have just have a fifteen year old kid just walk up to an NES and be like, Why the fuck is this square? This is not ergonomic. What where are all the buttons? And we'd just be like, Yeah, A to jump, B to shoot, go <laughs> That'd be lots of fun. Lots of fun. Uh, anybody else in chat got any ideas? Forza could make a nice esport. Yeah, I think any racing game, if they decided to pick one, make an esport out of it, that could work really well. And everybody pick their cars and all that kind of stuff. Or everybody ends up with the same car, same build, that kind of thing. Um, could have really, could be really, really interesting. I'd love that. Uh, I don't know. Anybody else got any ideas? Let's see what chat has to say. Do, do, do. I don't see anything. It's hard. There's a lot of things. It's moving fast and it's tiny. No. Okay, that's about it. I think for uh, ideas on esports, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head what's coming up. I mean, stuff like single player games, like uh, like uh, you know, Uncharted obviously is not going to work. Um, what's coming up? Fallout. You can't really do anything with that. I mean, uh, you already got the speed running, which is kind of an esport if you wanted to do speed running through games. Yeah, that's can cool. you really that's run? Yeah, it's totally impressive, but can you so really cool. run a eSport off of that? I don't know. It's more just like Guinness Book of World Records sort mm -hmm. of thing, which is the same deal. Uh, so yeah, it's cool. I think there's a lot out there, but obviously, like, the dedication to the community has to be super, super tight. Um, mm -hmm. The developer and the community need to be, you know, like, in constant conversation, mm -hmm. and things keep, to ha keep having to be delivered by the developer in order to... Uh, hold up one of these events uh, or one of these games and call it an eSport. And uh, there has to be enough people willing to, like, quit their day jobs and play this game professionally and get paid lots of money for it. Well, you or know, at least we, some. At mm -hmm. Mondial des Jeux, we were at the Just Dance competition, and I'm sorry, but the dudes, the two dudes that were in the finals that went mm -hmm. against each other, yep. man, that was like... That was pure athleticism, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. because Just Dance, you actually have to dance. And oh, I no, think that's hard. That is that is really hard and you know I, I had a friend who was a he was the provincial or maybe even the national champion for dance dance revolution oh yeah yeah i would love to like if just dance and dance dance revolution would come back as mm -hmm. you know as esports esports event you know like just dances and eswc in paris and all that jazz but you know they it used to be so big because of like asia mm -hmm. like that shit was fun to watch imagine if you had rock band esports you have you, you have out. air guitar competitions, <laughs> so why can't you have rock band and guitar hero competition? <laughs> oh yeah, because the developers stopped making the games for a while. Yeah, oh they're coming back, so you never know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll just do a rock concert one day. Maybe we'll just hold our own competition. Who can rock band the best? That'd be fun. Guitar hero the best. Guitar hero the best. <laughs> All right, let's jump into our second topic. PewDiePie is getting. A bunch of backlash what's new um, about his recent five night at freddy's video why because he isn't jumping around and screaming in fright he states the game doesn't scare him anymore because he's played the previous three and knows exactly what to expect many folks have criticized this video because of his low-key reaction you know they kind of come to see the ridiculousness and some even say that he should ham it up for the cam pewdiepie is kind of surprised and kind of offended that people expect him to fake it for the camera. <laughs> fake it. Do you guys feel you have to act differently when you Twitch stream than when you are normally, you know, playing a game? That you have to perform 
and you have to be a certain way in order to please your audience. Yeah. Go! <laughs> well, it's easy when you don't have an audience to please, but theoretically, if I were to stream every night, no, I wouldn't act differently because, A, I, I just don't like that. Okay. I know, but the thing is, it's like, I understand that Twitch streaming, a lot of for a lot of people, they make their, they build their image on an image, right? That's what they're building their, their little community around. Mm -hmm. And I totally get that. So they have to act in a certain way. Because I've read testimonials. I've read stories of people like being two different people on and off camera. And I totally get that. That's what you want. But for me as a person, I can't do that. So I'd probably just be me, what I'm doing right now, but gaming. And so I, I told, and I totally respect uh, PewDiePie for, for being genuine in his video. And I don't think he should be criticized for that. I mean, the guy puts out a million and one videos. I watch most of them. He's funny as fuck most of the time. <laughs> and uh, if, if something doesn't please him, I mean, it's a good thing. It just goes to show that maybe, <laughs> you know, the latest Five Night at Freddy's wasn't a, that good of an idea to come out with. You know what I mean? Like, it was an honest reaction. It didn't scare him anymore. It's, you know, been there, done that. So good for him. Yeah, and I know that some things just don't scare people um, as it does do others. My husband and I watched scary movies together, Paranormal Activity. I giggled at and could predict every single jumping moment. He was freaked out. And then other movies, I'd be freaked out because maybe it's a more psychological thriller and that creeps me out more, and he would be like, yeah, whatever, that was okay. So it's to each their own, and I can imagine that if, if you know, fourth time round, you know, fifth time round, whatever it is, movie game, that if they keep relying on the same scare I mean, tactics, you won't be as scared because you know what to expect. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like a million Resident Evil movie. Like, I've kind of moved on. It's like, okay, it's not. Mm. You know, it's what not is it about? You play Outlast a lot. A lot. Yeah. Well, I can't <laughs> talk anymore. <laughs> okay. Outlast actually fucking scares the shit out of me and I would never stream it purposely because I start screeching. So but, like, what, what is in it that scares you? Uh, it's just, it's dark and then like you hear noises and then like, like you know what's coming and then I'd start be like, ah, ah, and I was like that for like, 20 minutes, so I, I'm not good. I would never stream a horror movie because, like, I'm too jumpy. Uh, horror game because I'm too jumpy and too screechy for that, and especially a game like Outlast. Like, there's one part I'm in right now. I'm in the basement, and it's all dark, and like I have to navigate through it because you don't have a gun or anything, right? You just have a flashlight, mm -hmm. and uh, you have to hide and shit. And like, like I'm I'm running away from them, and I'm still screeching, and they're not even coming after me. So it's so scary. No, no, Craig, I will not be streaming Outlast. It's too I, don't know, man. I had a lot of fun streaming PT, and I actually oh. felt like I wasn't alone when I was playing it because I was like talking my way through things and being like, <laughs> "Okay, I'm gonna go do this," and, I and be I'm freaking out, sure. and and yeah. But I do find when you're Twitch streaming that because you're like trying to concentrate on the game and mm -hmm. trying to concentrate on the chat at the same time, yeah. it's draining. So draining. But not so much putting up a face. Cat SD thoughts? I think. People, he got such a following for being himself. People, when when YouTubers and streamers get a lot of following, it's because people fall in love with the person, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, a lot of them do this because they're looking for something genuine, not like the pre-manufactured stars that we have to deal with usually. So I think it's important that he stays genuine. The day he starts acting or starts thinking, you know, what does my audience want and I'll do it, I'm like... Your audience wants you to be you. If there are people coming in saying, you know what, PewDiePie should be doing this, I'm like, I'm sorry, are you new? You know, and it's okay also for him to evolve and do different things. Yeah, and then but I get, yeah, keep going. It's just like, it's it's about him being honest, and like, if he's not scared of Five Nights at Freddy's because he's played every other game, then I think the dev fail. Mm -hmm. Like but maybe that exactly. game. I agree with Catherine. Like you know that maybe that game's a dud, and he shouldn't. He has no obligation to make a game look good. No, he doesn't. But at the same time, there's other devs who are. I'm sorry, other um, let's players who are playing it, and they're honestly getting scared at, like shitless. And but that's to each their own, right? Maybe for some people, maybe it would scare me, but or would not scare me, but scare Cat Ashley. Like I might pay play out less and be like, eh, whatever, this is predictable, but that's just me, right? While Cat, it's not so much. Well, it also, it also depends on your level of nervousness. That too. You know, I, you know, I'm a pretty low-key person, and I very rarely, like, you know, screech and scream, except if there's a spider, then I fucking get up straight away. It is like, I don't, 
even need to say that there's a spider, people in my area surrounding are like, that's the only time she fucking gets up and screams. So, but playing a game that is a scary game that is not a, a predictable game, I, I wouldn't react. You, unless you have spiders, every time I turn around there's a fucking spider. But, <laughs> you know, um, I'm not good with horror games. They might not, like, scare me a lot when I'm playing them and I might not react, but then when I go to bed, I close my eyes, all I see is fucking pyramid head! <laughs> yeah. So, I don't play them anymore, because they, they get me two hours later. <laughs> yeah, I feel you there. That's when you start getting creeped out when the lights are off in your house and you're like, I'm still playing a game. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. All right, last question. I kind of added this without you guys knowing, but I want to know what video game is on your video game bucket list. I'll bang it. One, two, three, go. Bucket list. What is your must, like, the game oh. you haven't played yet, you gotta play? Ooh. Final Fantasy 2 and Beyond. Have you not played any Final Fantasies? It's the first. That's it, that's all. That's all you played? That's all I've played. Okay. Oh my you can God. stop. You can stop at ten. So no, wait. The new one. The, well, wait till the H three remake. Everybody and see what sixteen looks like. But yeah, yeah. And you don't need ten too. That's fan service. I guess I'll put that on my bucket list. But to be honest, I don't know. I don't know. You gotta I love don't. RPGs though to play Final Fantasy. I do, but that's the, the thing. I do. It's and the classicest never, of RPGs. I never. I kept moving on, and I just never did it. And my brother. Has always the reason why we had the Final Fantasy games was because my brother's been on a humongous Final Fantasy game. Like he doesn't play video games anymore, yet he buys the Final Fantasies. Like that's what he buys his consoles for. Mm. So for him, it's like I don't know. I just never. I don't know. I went towards the, I don't know, the fucking Japanese fighting games over. Like I don't know. It was just like a, just never did them. So I guess I could put that on my. Uh, but you had all the consoles, right? It wasn't an all, issue that every single, yeah. absolutely not. I've had every single one since I was since the beginning. I don't know, I just never, I guess because when, when it first came out I was young, and then I played the first one when I was a bit older, but then didn't go back to the old ones, because then new games came out, and just, then I'm not going to play the random middle one, and then I just, I don't know, just kept going, got into a pattern. But see, it's a cool bucket list, though, isn't that an exciting bucket list? Like, that's fun. That's a good bucket list. How about you, Kat? SD? I had Journey on my bucket list, so... Tick! <laughs> um... But other than that, I never had a Super Nintendo, so a lot of oh the classic God. RPGs from that wow. era are on my bucket list. Secret of Mana, mm. Chrono Trigger. Mm. <laughs> I play Chrono That's Cross, but not Trigger. Okay. Uh, the Final Fantasies, like Final Fantasy VI, which is actually Final Fantasy IV, I think. I forget how the mix goes. But the one with Terra, the girl with the green ponytail. And the amazing song. Um, yeah, I played it a bit. I played a bit of Secret of Mana, and I played halfway through that game because my ex-boyfriend had let me is Super Nintendo. So, like, all of these guys. Like, just everything. Like, those key Super Nintendo games. I need I need to that's play. That's really... That's a good bucket list, too, man. Yeah. Cool. And I just... I guess emulators. Hmm. I guess I could do that. Yeah, you could. Um, I think some of them are, a fair number of them are actually available, uh, Final Fantasy-wise, on uh, mobile now. They've put a lot of them out. They're around 20 bucks or something on the uh, App Store. And, yeah, a lot of those games I think you can even track down in, like, the uh, Virtual Console on the Wii U and the 3DS and stuff like that. So, I'm hope is sure. not lost. lost. I'm pretty uh. sure, like, for the Android ports or the iOS port, at one point you can get a humble bundle of all of the Yes, you could. You could. Yeah. Let me let me see the prices. Mm. Me, me, you guys went to the past. I'm going to the future. I'm waiting for that open world Zelda. Whenever that comes, then I can go. Like, <laughs> yeah. There's my bucket list. I might fill it. Uh, there's always going to be a new game that I want to play. That's it. Um, I'm but, trying to do but, stuff that I haven't played, but yeah. It's hard the point of the bucket man. list is playing a game that you know is not going to be a dud that you've always wanted to play, or that people hyped and were like, mm -hmm. you know, you've never played this. I mean, the open world Zelda could be a dud, and your bucket then your bucket list would be like wasted. That's okay. I mean, the whole point a bucket list is something you want to do before you die. They could be mm -hmm, old exactly. games, they could be new games. I will exactly. not play an open world Zelda before I die. Mm. <laughs> 
I want to see the ending of uh, Song of Ice and Fire before I die. That's how much. Oh, that would be nice, yeah. Okay, okay. Let's... There you go. There you go. Just like I needed to see the end of Lost. And oh. I'm okay with that. Yeah. We've got a few questions, two to be exact. Finder asks, now the pixel has bombed and is forgotten. It's not forgotten yet. It's still out there. Um, what's the best video game movie, and why is Jean Claude Van Damme, and why is it Jean Claude Van Damme Street Fighter? <laughs> what? It's not. It's not. What? Said that. <laughs> Who said that? Who said that Street Fighter? Finder. 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 Whatever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> why is it Jean Claude Van Damme Street Fighter? That's good because I like Jean Claude Van Damme. I used to have a crush on him as a kid, but I wouldn't say it's the best. I've met him. Video game movie. Want to see? I'll show you as I as I as I go through my Instagram stuff. What so what like movie is it? Live action movies or can it be animes? Anything. No, I think it has to be. Well, it's a video game based movie. Yeah, but, but it could be there's anything. Shit ton of animes based on video games. That's like, okay. What's wrong with an anime? There are I, many more animes that I love a hell of a lot more than live actions. And Graf's gonna hate this for me, but uh, Fatal Fury, oh. the anime is based on the games, oh. and Samurai Showdown. Well then. Yep. Those are my two favorite, and Graf's gonna hate it because he says Shamrock Shadow is crap, which I disagree. You suck, Graf. But no, yeah. <laughs> Fatal Fury. If you guys get your hands on Fatal Fury anime, all three movies are fucking great. Watch it. Cool. I'm still looking for my picture. How about you, Kat? Um, the only gaming related traditional media item that I've loved my entire life was the Pokemon animes. They were pretty good. I think there's a new movie coming. Yeah, the original ones. Like, you know, I could, I used to be able to chant the Team Rocket thing in mm -hmm. both English and French. Wow. The, you know, here comes trouble and make it double. <laughs> Actually, that's a really La good... Team Rocket s'en va vers de nous, monsieur! In French. <laughs> yeah, but the Resident Evils were, uh, the first Resident Evil, I should say, was a good, um... Uh, movie based on a video game. Mm -hmm. That final was really good. Even the Super Mario Brothers was pretty good. Cheesy as fuck. John Luke Zamo, but it was good. I don't know. I what? should have banned somebody. Why can't you search an Instagram? God damn it. I don't really use Instagram anymore, so I have no idea. I want to show you my picture. Cause I actually, he's when, actually not very tall. When I was a kid, uh, I loved the Super Mario action movie. We yeah. watched it a lot. The old one? The but, shitty one? Yeah, but I'm not going to say it's the best one because I know it's shitty. <laughs> it's just something that I know is shitty but I can't help but love. <gasps> that? <laughs> Damn, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I used to love him as a kid. Hello! <laughs> oh. Yeah, he's pretty chill. And he got the greatest Yeah, he does. He's a nice... He's a Belge, right? He's from Belgium? Is Belgium, yeah. Different? Um, I think the Silent Hill movies are pretty good because they actually don't realize that they're part of the game. Or they were inspired by a game. I, I never saw those, but I saw the House of the Dead one and it was just pretty brutal. Oh yeah, that was pretty shitty. Okay. That was terrible. pretty shitty. Um, the two writer ones went, weren't terrible. Oh, I forgot about those. Um, I'm trying to think of what else was based on a movie. Uh, two... Tomb Raider, uh, I found Angelina Jolie made a cheesy Lara Croft. She did. She was stereotypical. She yeah. made the '90s Lara Croft, though. She made like she the looked polygon like, version. Yeah, yeah. She looked the, the Lara Croft from what we know, like yeah. my childhood. So with a sh with a shitty British accent. Oh, I was, yeah, I was not impressed by her her work as Lara Croft. I loved her in other movies. That one, I was just like, I saw the trailer and I was like, nope, nope, cannot buy her as Lara Croft. Moving on. <laughs> All right, let's jump. Let's do one more question, and then we'll close out the show. And I will run to the other room and turn on rare replay. Pat Laundry nineteen eighty asks, "Hey girls, I want to know your opinions on this. I just finished Batman Arkham Origins yesterday night on my channel, and my surprise about the tease of the Suicide Squad. Hear about it? Do we know something about it? As in, in a game?" coming with Suicide Squad. I mean, I finished Arkham Origins, and uh, that didn't even, like, dawn on me. Mostly, I think, because, like, Suicide, Suicide Squad now has only become, like, super de duper popular because of the movie. Ah, oh, so maybe they're gonna come out with what he means by, like, there, there was a tease in the, in the sense that there could be a Suicide Squad video game? Potentially. Which would that be really would be cool. cool. I know Rockstar is done uh, with 
Batman Arkham series? Rocksteady. Uh, sorry, what did I say? Rockstar. Yeah, I'm getting confused. Yeah, Rocksteady is done with them. Whether or not they'll continue on with another version of Batman or something mm. else in the DC realm, it'd be cool for them to do a Superman versus maybe Batman. Maybe that's what they're taking, though. Maybe. Maybe. That's pretty cool, though. If that's the case, that would be pretty cool. I think that would be interesting. It would be different characters. I, I'm not a big uh, superhero fan through and through. Like, I've reached peak superhero, but Suicide Squad seems pretty okay. That trailer. Yeah, it seems okay so far. I'm probably going to see it. I stopped seeing uh, Screw Moves for a while now. The Captain America, the first one was the last one I've seen. I'm done, but I think that would be a really cool video game, though. It would be. if, Especially if you could, like... That would be a good one where you could do open world because Suicide Squad, I was reading, uh, Polygon had an amazing article like explaining what Suicide Squad is and how it's like all these different villains that they use to make different teams that they can, you know, blame um, if they, shit goes wrong or to save the day. Um, and you could have like so many different villains and you could play anything. So like that open world uh, DC, DC Universe Online that they made could totally work like a Suicide Squad and you make your Suicide Squad and go off in the realm and like, you know try and save the day the villainous way that'd be kind of cool mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we'll see if they actually make a game yeah, we don't exactly. really know what rocksteady's working on next there'll be a lego suicide squad game at the very least that's mm. weird huh be cute i think that's weird no I, I was playing batman 3 beyond gotham yesterday and at one point uh brainiac comes in and they have to uh, they actually have to t team up with the villains to fight off Brainiac because at that point like Lex Luthor and Joker are like you can't take the earth we're being villains on here oh. and it was actually pretty fun um, Joker was one of my favorite characters to play because he has a gun and special suits and thing and bombs uh, so I think they could easily make that one they'll have to like PG it up but I mean oh, yeah, they sure. made they made the Lord of the Rings one of the funniest move games I've played and that movie is a fucking yeah. bummer Mm. The whole I way through. The true. whole, like, Sam, Frodo, Sam, uh, will I we make it, it Frodo? <laughs> Fucking eight hours of that, and <laughs> the video game is actually hilarious. So, I love Lego for that. Yeah, they do a good job. That is very true. I love the Harry Potter one. That was one of my favorites. Alright, I think that's it. Um, if you, We're going to close out the show, but we're not stopping streaming because... I have a replay, so I think I'm going to play Viva Piñata. It, I've never played it before, so I thought it'd be kind of fun. I've got it in the other room, so I have to run over there once we're done here. Um, yeah, that should be fun. So stick around, join us. I think the girls are going to be there in the chat. But yeah, I'm going to be on camera playing the game. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, if you want to learn more about Girls on Games, you can go to our website at girlsongames.ca. You can follow us at on Twitter at the Girls on Games. We're on Instagram at Girls on Games. YouTube, the Girls on Games. Facebook, the Girls on Games. This Twitch channel. You can always come back in case you're hearing this on uh, on iTunes or something like that. Because yeah, we do have this on iTunes and we put it on YouTube. But if you want to see it in its live entirety, we do it every Monday night at 8 p.m. And let's you know we tell you. Um, so yeah, come hang out. We love you all. It's been lots of fun. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Cat and Cat. It's been a wonderful cat sandwich. <laughs> yep. The so sandwich. I keep forgetting to unmute myself. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice kind of sandwich, a cat sandwich. All right. Agreed. Give me five minutes to run to the other room. Make sure everything's set up right, and we'll be playing. I will be playing Viva Pinata. Hang out with me. Let's see. Uh, let's see what the game's all about. Cause yeah, I've never played it before. So thanks. See you all later. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye.